Growing up, my dad did a ton for me and I've been looking for an opportunity to be able to return the favor. And we did so by transforming his garage into what it is now, this motorcycle man cave mecca, whatever you want to call it. We did a really cool bar area for him as well as some nice motorcycle parking area and a tool storage space for him to be able to maintain his motorcycles. All right, now let's get into the process. So the first step of the process was cleaning out the garage. So we moved everything out of the garage. We also took down a storage rack that was taking up a lot of headroom in the back of the garage. With the garage cleared out, now we can move on to painting the walls. I wanted to go with a Harley scheme uh, as far as the paint scheme goes. So we went with a darker black on the bottom and then a thin orange stripe because I didn't want it to be too crazy loud and then a lighter gray on top. And I think that it worked out perfectly as far as kind of matching those Harley uh, paint colors. We started off by taping out the top and bottom portions and then painting those at the same time. Jamie cut in all of the corners and then I followed up with a roller. With the top and bottom painted, then we can move on to the orange stripe itself, which was actually a little bit more difficult and time consuming than we thought because we had to actually cut it in versus being able to tape it with that straight line. Um, just due to the surface that we were painting on, that block and the mortar lines, it was just a little bit hard for, for that tape to stick and completely seal out the paint line. After getting the walls painted, one thing that I wanted to do uh, and I wasn't sure that I was gonna have time to do it, but I went for it anyway, was remove all of the shop lights and replace them with can lighting. Now, can lighting is a little bit more homey. It's not as bright as the shop lights that were in here. However, that's what we were going for. Kind of a chill space, um, not super bright, so that the lights could be on while we're hanging out in here having a beer. The other nice thing is that we can position those cans just how we wanted. We got cans over the work space as well as one over each motorcycle and lighting the bar area and doorways nicely. While I was running electrical, I decided that I needed to add more outlets in here. There was very limited amount of outlets, um, so we added a bunch more outlets on the back wall as well as the bar wall where, where there were no outlets at all. The other cool thing that I did was I added a couple of outlets that were connected to the light switches. Now, the reason I did that was because my dad has a couple of neon signs that he really likes, um, and he goes through the effort of turning those on and off every time he comes out here. So I thought it would be really cool if we could connect those to the lights themselves. With the walls and the lighting done, now we can move on to the floor itself. Now we knew we wanted to redo the flooring. However, I wanted to go with a higher gloss, kind of a higher end product. So we ultimately decided to go with Rock Solid uh, by Rust-Oleum. It's a really neat product. It's got a super high glossy uh, finish and it just is, it looks great in here. The biggest thing with epoxy floor coatings is that you have to make sure that the floor is prepped correctly and the space is somewhat conditioned. Here in Florida, we've got super high humidity and high heat, so we needed to maintain the, the temperature as well as the humidity in here. The way that we did that was closing the garage door and opening the door to the house and trying to maintain that uh, temperature and humidity level as much as possible. With the space condition, then we moved on to the first step of the process, and that is cleaning and degreasing the floor. Now we use Rust-Oleum's um, concrete cleaner and degreaser by simply applying that to the surface, scrubbing it with a scrub brush as, um, as much as we could to ag agitate the surface and get uh, most of that stuff up off of it and get it loose. You let that sit for a little while and then you spray it down and squeegee the area clean. Once we completely dried that out, we let that sit overnight for 24 hours and completely dried out the garage and then we moved on to the primer coat. Now we needed to prime the floor because we had, the garage floor was previously coated with an epoxy finish. However, it was really in some pretty rough shape. So in order to lock that down without having to grind the concrete down completely, we used Rust-Oleum's Recoat Primer. And it's just like painting the floor. You simply, after cleaning and degreasing, get it, getting it dry and getting all the debris free of it, then we applied that with a paint roller and uh, let it sit overnight. With the floor primed and that all dried and cured, we can move on to the rock solid application. We started by laying a thin ribbon around the wall and then Jamie took a brush 
and cut in all the way around the wall. I followed up with a paint roller and rolled about a four by four square and then we applied the flakes to it. We repeated this process over and over until we got through the entire garage and worked our way back into the house. After letting the epoxy set up for 24 hours, we were able to move everything back into the garage. Another kind of last minute decision was to paint the silhouette of the Harley Davidson logo on the wall. After a little trial and error trying to figure out how to do so, what we ended up doing was taking a, um, a printout of that silhouette of the bar and shield and then measuring it and scaling it up onto the wall. Once I was able to trace all that out with a pencil, Jamie followed up with that darker black paint that we used on the bottom and it turned out great. Now the next few steps kind of all happen simultaneously from the bar to the feature wall to the AC. However, as far as the bar goes, it was a fairly simple build. It took a little bit of time, but it turned out really great. And I'm going to be providing those plans on the website. We used two stock cabinets from Home Depot. We left a little space in the middle for a trash can. And then we built a wall around those two cabinets and mounted our bar to that. And then we used that wall to clad the front of it with shiplap. As far as the bar and the countertop goes, we use laminate countertops because they're water resistant and it's just an easy, uh, inexpensive countertop to do. And then we followed up with some wood trim that we were able to kind of make a little bit of a bar rail out of. Now, since the cabinets were unfinished, we needed to remove the doors and stain those. Jamie followed up with an ebony stain, which is kind of matches the paint scheme that we had going on around the garage anyway. So like I said, the plans will be provided for the bar on our website. However, this is easily customizable and uh, it's fairly straightforward to build. The biggest hero of this garage, in my opinion, is the one that's not super visible. It's the air conditioning. So we partnered with Cooper and Hunter in order to put a zoned mini split system into this garage. The guys from Cooper and Hunter came out and installed it to make sure that it was installed properly and covered by their warranty. Now the cool thing about um, a zone system is we have two units, one of which can be kind of left on all the time while the door is closed. And then when the doors open and we're hanging out in here, luckily we have a screen over the garage door and that will help keep some of the air in, but we're able to pump in a bunch of cool air and kind of dry out the space as well as keep the temperature down during those hot Florida summers. Overall, when it comes to cooling a space like this, a mini split is the way to go. They're super efficient. And as far as price goes, Cooper and Hunter has done a very good job of being able to keep that price low and making it available for the homeowner to purchase on Amazon. 
Now the cool thing about that is that you don't have to be, you're not upcharged by your HVAC technician. You can buy the unit directly, which I'll have links below to in the description, and then have your HVAC technician come out and install the unit. So as far as Cooper and Hunter goes, the nice thing about them is they offer a variety of models all the way from being able to just cool a small, a small space up to an entire house with multi zones and um, different units in different spaces. And their price points are really, really good compared to the quality of, of the unit. With the AC installed, then we can move on to the feature wall and liquor storage. We started off by mounting two by fours to the block itself with tap cons. Then we moved on to the planking. Now, Jamie stained that. Uh, we went with just a, a standard one by six by eight, and Jamie stained that with the ebony stain to kind of match the cabinets. It turned out great. We ran one by six by eight all the way up the wall around the TV that we had mounted earlier, and then we followed up with the shelving itself. For the shelving, we used galvanized pipe to run from the bottom all the way up to the ceiling, and then we used T's going back to the wall to support the shelves themselves. For the shelves, we went with 1x10s and we stained those ebony as well. I love the contrast of the galvanized pipe against the ebony stained wood, and overall, I think the feature wall is a huge success. It looks amazing and it really sets off the bar area. We completed that bar look with the other neon signs that my dad likes. And like I said before, we were able to plug them into a switched outlet connected to the lights um, so that they kind of come on automatically and go off by themselves. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that my dad is gonna love this space. Him and his buddies are gonna be able to hang out here after a day of riding and have a nice cold beer. If you want the plans for this bar, they're gonna be on, the, on my website, which there will be a link in the description or below in the comments that you can click on, and that will take you to those plans. Until next time, be safe and happy building. Oh, oh, look at you.